Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Indo-Canadian Business Chamber, I'm delighted to welcome you all to the Canadian Wood webinar on Architecture with Wood in India, presented by ICBC and sponsored by RTS. At ICBC, we promote and facilitate business and trade opportunities between India and Canada, thus helping grow the trade ties between the two countries. India and Canada have a very long relationship in the trade and business of wood and lumber, and it is in this context that we have joined hands with Canadian Wood in India, which officially known as Forestry Innovation Investment, with its headquarters in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, to bring you this webinar. FII, as Canadian Wood is officially known, is a crown agency of the provincial government of British Columbia with support from federal government through Natural Resources Canada. Canadian Wood mandate is to promote forest products from British Columbia, Canada in the offshore markets. FII started its operations in India through 2013-14 and has been actively engaging with woodworking and trading industry in India to spread awareness and impart education on the Canadian wood species from British Columbia, and also sharing best practices, both for remanufacturing and structural applications for wood in India. This webinar is a step in that direction after having successfully hosted the first two webinars on the education front. We are indeed privileged to have such an illustrious lineup of eminent architects as the panelists and as the curator moderator of this webinar. I'm sure all of you are looking forward to hearing them and to seeing the presentation of their selective works being shared here. Canadian Wood Country Director Pranesh Chibbar, who is present here, will be flagging off the webinar with the introduction of the curator and moderator of the webinar after the opening address by Mr. Andrew Smith, Minister Commercial from the High Commission of Canada and India. Andrew has been a strong supporter of the chamber and we are very privileged to have him here with us today. I would now like to take this opportunity to welcome Andrew and thank him for his support and active role in promoting and strengthening of the Indo-Canadian business to deliver the opening remarks. Over to you, Andrew. Thank you very much, Nadara, and to Pranesh for inviting me to share some thoughts on today's webinar. With my background, in architecture, I am truly delighted to be joining this webinar from the Canadian High Commission here in Delhi. We have become new normal in these trying times as we continue to try to make business happen to connect our stakeholders and to reach out to target audiences. I want to take a moment to congratulate the Indo-Canada Business Chamber and Canadian Wood, formerly here in India known as FII India, for leveraging this platform to engage leading personalities from the world of architecture and foster the sharing of knowledge and best practices among the fraternity of architects, real estate developers, hospitality industry, and the woodworking industry. I welcome the participation in particular of the manufacturers, the contractors, and the timber trades. India is one of Canada's fastest growing trading partners. Canadian exports to India have been growing at an impressive rate. Last year alone, our exports to India grew to $4.3 billion, placing India among the top 10 trading partners for Canada. Our two-way investment relationship has reached to over $4 billion now. We have seen a massive upswing of investment by Canadian portfolio investors into India, such as Brookfield and Fairfax Holdings. These two companies alone have invested more than $35 billion into India. If we factor in our pension funds, we are close to $60 billion in portfolio investment. So what does this mean? If we pull all this together, trade, investment, services, tourism, the movement of Indian students to Canada, we are looking at a commercial partnership of $90 billion. Canada has eight trade offices in India, our third largest country program in the world, with trade commissioners across that network supporting building products in the forestry industry. Canada and India are opposed to build an even stronger and deeper economic partnership in this post-COVID world. Our trade and foreign ministers have been speaking throughout this crisis, as well as our prime ministers. 
Canada is a world leader in sustainable forestry. Globally, only 10% of the world's forests are certified. This means that Canada comprises over one third of the total world's forest certification. FII India is a familiar name to all of us in India. It is a crown agency of the provincial government of British Columbia and supported by the federal government through NRCAN. Its mandate is to promote British Columbia forest products in offshore markets, and I've worked with them in markets from the Philippines, China, Japan, and now here in India. Canada, and the province of BC in particular, is one of the largest producers of softwood lumber in the world. It is a world leader in sustainable forest management, and hence it is uniquely positioned as a long-term supplier to meet India's requirement of wood. I want to leave you with a couple of thoughts. Canada's forest sector uses almost 100% of every tree harvested. Wood chips, sawdust, bark, go into making everyday products that we use like toilet paper. The N95 masks that the COVID warriors are using here in India. Hospital gowns, bioplastics, textiles and biofuels. Every year, Canada plants over 600 million seedlings. This forest regeneration pulls more carbon out of the atmosphere per unit area than any other type of ground cover. From building taller structures to using carbon storing wood to wood chips to make bioplastics, innovation in our forestry sector is lowering our carbon footprint and supporting our place as a leader in the emerging circular economy. I want to thank all attendees for taking part in today's session. And I'd like to pass it over now to Pranish, the country director of Canadian Wood, formerly FII India, to start our proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew, for the enlightening address and also for the support and encouragement we have enjoyed from your team and yourself in particular. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Forest Free Innovation, I welcome you to the Canadian Wood Webinar on Architecture with Wood in India. And I appreciate your taking time out to listen and see the labor of love shared by the three stalwarts of Indian architecture. I'm sure you are as eager as I am to see their presentations and listen to them. I trust we are in for some excellent audio visual sharing of their experience and expertise, which will be followed by a 30 minute panel discussion curated by Professor Gurdev Singh. Professor Gurdev Singh will be introducing architect Mahesh Gurpreet Singh and architect Malik but I leave their formal introductions to Gurdev and move on to introducing Professor Gurdev. Himself a great architect with a wide experience in architecture with wood. Professor Gurdev is an eminent architect with an international experience of having executed many prestigious projects in different parts of the world. But it is his contribution to architecture as an academician that deserves special mention here. He draws upon his vast experience and expertise to successfully transfer knowledge to the students of architecture in India and abroad. He has been the Dean of Architecture at Navrachna University in Baroda since inception until recently. And in addition, has an enriching experience of teaching for over 19 years at Canberra, the Australian capital. For his contributions as a professor of architecture in Canberra, he was also awarded the Lifetime Teaching Award by the Institute of Architects, known as ACT Australia. Gurdev is also into research, and his study is primarily focused on lightweight construction with wood. Gurdev is a brilliant designer and a lateral thinker, with numerous design competitions, both national and international to his credit, his strong belief in clarity of thought process finds an expression in his designs, irrespective of the size of the project. Amongst many highlights of his career in this, how is the house he built for himself on a 30 acre bushland on the outskirts of Canberra in Australia. You can see it here, literally designed and built by himself. On the collage, the first two pictures on the top are the house that he built for himself in, in Australia. And closer home, the very first Grulam project in India. It is the center for excellence on the campus of CEPT University in Ahmedabad. The images you can see, the bottom two, 
uh, they really speak volumes about his thought process and his foresight into introducing uh, glue lamp and, and, and mass timber into India. We are indeed honored to have Professor Gurdev Singh curate the panel and in this webinar also moderate the proceedings. Thank you, Professor Gurdev Singh. I now request you to start the proceedings. Over to Gurdev. Thank you, Pranesh. It's a pleasure for me to be the curator and moderator of this prestigious webinar with such illustrious personalities from my fraternity on the panel. Despite my engagement with Canadian Wood over the past five years, I was very enlightening. It was very enlightening for me to listen to the address by Honorable Andrew Smith and note that thoughtful work is being done by Canada on sustainable forestry and growth of trade ties between Canada and India. I, along with the registered audience, look forward to the very interesting next 45 minutes of highly informative presentations of 15 minutes each, I repeat, 15 minutes each by the panelists, which will be followed by 30 minutes of panel discussion, and finally concluded with roughly half an hour of question and answer session with the audience. Since the time is limited, similar questions from the audience will be clubbed together uh, to maximize number of queries during the question and answer session. I will be introducing each panelist individually prior to inviting them to their respective presentations. Among the panelists, we have architect N. Mahesh from Travendram, architect Gurpreet Singh from Delhi and CR, and finally, last but not the least, architect Kamal Malik from Mumbai. Starting with our first panelist, Mr. N. Mahesh is the principal architect of the firm Mahesh and Ayer and an eminent educationist. He is the chairman and managing trustee of College of Architecture Travendram, I believe one of the oldest architecture institutions in India. He has been reviving traditional timber architecture in India using green reforested timber for the past 30 years and has successfully designed several IGBC acknowledged green rated buildings. His book, Amazing Timber Resorts, is a testimony to his contribution and innovative approach for revival of architecture with wood in India and is considered as a referral book by other academicians. He is well recognized and admired as a specialist in architecture for the hospitality sector and is associated with at least 30 hotels, resort projects, and those operated by reputed brands such as Taj, Hilton, ITC, Radisson, and so on. His body of work spanning well over 40 years has fetched him numerous accolades at both national and international level. He was honored for excellence in the field of architecture and engineering by the late Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam, former President of India. I welcome architect N. Mahesh on board this webinar and look forward to his presentation. I also encourage the audience to please keep typing in their questions addressed to the panelists while they're delivering their address. I now invite architect Mahesh to share his presentation. Over to Mahesh, please. Okay, Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody, for this wonderful uh, webinar. We are today um, here only because of the FII, uh, the Canadian Government Organization, Canadian World, and ICBs, ICBC, uh, who have jointly organized this uh, webinar. Uh, without wasting time, um, I have to thank uh, Professor Gurdev Singh for introducing and my colleagues Kamal and uh, uh, Gurpreet, who are wonderful architects, you know, some of the probably 
the top architects in the country. Um, now to talk about uh, I mean, the, to talk about the timber. Timber. I want to make this uh, light uh, because timber is a light uh, material. So let this uh, my talk also be a little light <laughs> because uh, we have to go with the, uh, eco, the, the the ecosystem of the material. Timber from forefathers. We have been using timber, and because traditional carpenters, even Jesus Christ father the family were uh, carpenters so that means timber is such a holy material and timber is a material that was used even 10,000 years back much before um, uh, mud than the block work so we what are we trying to say we are trying to say that timber is a light structure because it is a light roof it has a light uh, the light roof needs light wall light supports the light support needs light foundation. So unlike a heavy brick and mortar or a concrete or a building block, and unlike what many people think, timber is as good as country wood, hardwood. I can assure you, as an architect with 30 year experience in timber, that timber cross laminated and blue lamb softwood, that is a Canadian wood or the softwood, is as good as any country wood. So this is my uh, initial uh, presentation on the subject. Now I will go to um, some of the visuals. Now timber, when you use timber skyline, the, uh, the skyline becomes very vibrant. As you can see in the image, the, uh, it is very difficult to create such a skyline in a uh, concrete building. The, you can see in these visuals that uh, you can create very interesting skyline and very undulating and very um, um, uh, exciting skyline. That is the advantage of uh, timber. Look at this is another hotel uh, which we have designed in uh, Kerala, where the skyline is uh, uh, made interesting, mainly because it is uh, timber. So timber is such a versatile material that you can create any shape which is very difficult or very costly or needs high engineering in the case of uh, other uh, material like concrete or steel or uh, any other thing. And the advantage in timber is that you can pre-engineer the timber. This entire thing was done in Indonesia and brought to India. So pre, uh, no, sorry, China and brought to India. And it can also be very elegant, very beautiful because timber is a very uh, romantic material. Now, if you look at the support system, I mean, the support systems are very light, and this timber is such a beautiful material that it, the whole roof looks very pleasing to you, and we don't have to do interior uh, fault ceiling or interior wall paneling. And uh, look at this uh, support system. It's a corridor in a hotel, five-star hotel in Baker, that then Air corridor, the support systems and the roof are all uh, timber. So the uh, support system is much more romantic because uh, timber, you have got slim timber pillars and you can feel, the guests can feel the timber. That's the beauty of the support system. And then you can make very interesting support systems. That is the advantage with this. Look at the way the, uh, the another restaurant in the Taj Hotel in Kovala. Because of the um, versatility of timber, we could create some interesting elements for the interior. Now, look at the capaciousness that you get. When you use timber, for a, this hall is at least uh, 4,000 square, 4,500 square feet. But it has only four slender walls, pillars. And the whole hall is fully made of timber framework. Of course, this is not soft wood, this is Canadian wood, but this whole wall is made of uh, uh, timber framework. And we have used traditional trusses that our uh, uh, forefathers made uh, during their time. Instead of trying to make it uh, a little modern, because I didn't want that modern uh, roof system, I wanted an ethnic roof system. So I wanted a roof system which should be very vernacular. So that is why you will see these trusses. See, look at the truss again. 
the underside of a pavilion. It creates very capacious interior. That is the advantage of timber because you can create volume and make it very interesting. Now, if you look at roof system, you can create very wonderful skyline in timber. Like I told you earlier on the skyline, the roof systems you can make it very look look very domesticated. This, these are the cottages in Zuri Hotel, which was originally Radisson. The right one is the one which was intercontinental, now called Lalit. And these roof systems are very easily, um, um, you can design it the way you want. Because the timber being a versatile material will give you the, uh, will give you the impact, uh, what you need. And you see the roof system of uh, Puar Island. So this is my first project in Tipper, where we created this roof system with a hot wall, then clay tile, then we had coconut timber. We didn't even use hardwood. Coconut timber is like softwood. So we have used coconut rafters, coconut timber. So the timber is something which is very romantic. And we should in India or in the world go back to timber instead of doing uh, very big concrete structures. Again, you see the roof systems here, how beautifully we can create the interior space of a restaurant or anything like that. And you can see the joints here on the right side. So all these look very pleasing to the guests, a hotel guests or anybody who comes here. And uh, you can also use timber very versatile way in the interior. And, uh, uh, in, in uh, we, this is a hotel that arrives in Coilo, where we have used timber for the ceiling with the concealed uh, LED lighting and timber for the handrails. Now, if you look at the staircase, the whole staircase can be made of timber. Uh, and there's a beautiful sound as you step in the staircase and you get that lovely timber sound when you climb up. That is very beautiful, very romantic. So timber is a very versatile material, again, I'm keep on saying. And timber as a soft architecture, it's very important. And because it is not harsh, you can have that through like the 14 yeah. Yeah. or you can have five ties, and you can have timber hand rails. So Now timber, again, you can use it as soft architecture in okay. If you use granite walls, thatch roof, and confused landscaping. So timber is, uh, creates great interiors and soft architecture. So again, we have used timber in a beach resort for the Taj, where we have put railway sleepers on the floor, you see. These are second-hand railway sleepers, 50 years old. And these timber sleepers and the timber soft architecture make the place uh, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I just want Gurpreet Singh's assistant. Please, can you mute yourself? I can hear all kinds of sounds coming in. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry about that. Yeah. Can I proceed? You know, the the movie that I uh, next one is, uh, I'm going to show you three projects where I have used uh, Canadian timber and country wood. Now, the first project is a project which I did about 12 years back in Poon, in Karnataka, called the Tamara Resort, which is one of the award winning. We won about 15, 16 awards for this resort world over. So, this is entirely um, partly used by country wood. What you see now is a reception, which is made of country wood. And uh, the reception block is a little in the remote area. The guests come here and go in a buggy. And you see, this is a bridge block. And you can see a tree coming from there. And there's a tree coming from the reception block. The beauty in timber is that in concrete, you cannot get a tree coming out so easily. So this is a um, main resort block um, where the f &B bar, the restaurant, the kitchen are all located. Again, this is a, another uh, leisure area and the conference area where the, again the roof systems are very pleasing because we have tried to use the 
uh, interesting skyline. Now I come to the Canadian wood. The, and all the 60 cottages, if you can see the conceptual section, the, the cottages are on stilts. They are propped on stilts. And the cottages have, when you sit in the cottage, you are very near to the trees. You are very near to the birds. That is the beauty of this uh, uh, section. And you can see that this is made of Canadian wood, the softwood, the pine spruce, Douglas fir, and fir, and uh, 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 cedar. So this is a project which I did with Canadian wood 12 years back. And uh, all these cottages, as, the, as you stand in the cottage deck, you are very near to the foliage of the tree. That is the beauty of this project, and that is why we want quite a lot of awards. And uh, we have got this timber from uh, Canada into China, and from China into India. And this is also to show you that there was a stream. I created this resort hotel, the central block spanning the stream as a bridge block. Probably this is one of the first projects in the Asia, where an entire resort hotel, a five-star hotel, is on a bridge, so that my footprint is not even 0 0.016. My footprint is the least among hotels in the world. And you can see that in the cottages, you are very near the tree, you are very near the birds. That is the beauty of uh, having uh, softwood, and you can again see the reception block here. And uh, this is the internal of the bridge block. You can see a glass door on the bottom, and uh, the bridge block spans like a bridge, and we have a glass floor for the restaurant and the lobby. So now I come to the Tamara Kodai, which is a conservation project, and this is a, in seven acres of land in Kodaikanal, in Tamil Nadu. And this is a heritage project, and uh, we have got a lot of uh, awards for this also, because this is a, a heritage pre adaptive project, not only conservation. We have pre-adaptive uh, uh, reuse. I'm sorry, not pre-adaptive, adaptive reuse. We have conserved and reused it. So we have adapted the conservation to reuse. So you can see that, uh, the, the, you, if you see the interior, we got all this timber pre-engineered and shipped from Indonesia in Japara, um, in near Samarang, and brought it here. And we had to make 300 timber drawings, as you can see this. In this project, we have used antique finish timber, but this is not softwood, this is hardwood. And you can see the interior. This was a chapel. It was originally a monastery. This Kodai project, the, uh, we, we conserved the, a monastic building, and we made it adaptively reused. So this was a chapel which has become a restaurant. So you can see that uh, we have tried to make the create, create all the retain all the existing walls with lime plaster and retain the rubble. We don't even we have used a lot of stained glasses to create the ambience. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that this can be done provided we apply our mind on conservation. And conservation and timber are good cousins because most of the conser conservation buildings are made out of timber. So we should, uh, in India, I recommend all architects, all clients, all builders to go back to timber, create light structure. Even a Western rich country like Europe or America, they are using timber. We are in India, we are using heavy walls and heavy concrete roof or stone roof. And we should get back to timber, that is my mantra. I now come to the last item of the, my presentation. This, uh, this is about using Canadian wood. My wife, uh, uh, Lata Mahesh, is one of the world's, or the world's biggest collector of belts. She has, her hobby is collecting belts over the last 20 years. And this is the only belt museum in the world in my house in my garden, in my house. And you can see a rock on the right side, the Bell Museum at the foot of it. And uh, this is the only Bell Museum in the world. 
you can see that uh, uh, the Canadian wood, uh, the Canadian wood, the FII gave us a timber and we built the entire museum with steel frames and timber. We used red cedar outside and we used Douglas fir and uh, uh, Western hemlock inside. And uh, the framework was made of uh, uh, pine screws and fir, that is PS, uh, PSF. So this is a project which uh, I use only timber, no cement paint, no wall, no masonry, nothing. And we, what we have also done is to treat this with uh, water-based uh, polyurethane and uh, uh, termite uh, uh, control by Bayer and uh, termite control uh, chemical. So I hope that this will stay for 30, 50, 70 years. I may not be there, but my wife's Bell Museum will be there. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah, over to you, Gurdev Singh. Yeah. Thanks, Manish, for a very inspirational presentation. Uh, I'm getting already getting a lot of mail um, appreciating your work here. Uh, I now have the pleasure of introducing our next panelist, architect Gurdev Singh, a fellow alumni from SEPT Ahmedabad and a longtime friend and associate. Gurdev founded Akar Design in 1983 and is also its principal architect. For close to four decades, Akar has designed and worked on a variety of award-winning projects from tenneries in Russia to several educational institutes, the GTB Memorial in Delhi and King's Educational Academy in Bhutan, to name a few. Concurrent to design in the educational institutions, he undertook a professional course at Harvard in learning environments for tomorrow so that he can be useful to the design of all the projects of institutions. Gurpreet's love for architecture goes beyond commercial projects in his desire to give back to society where it makes a difference. He is a founder member of NGO Ritanjali that pursued extensive rebuilding work as rehabilitation efforts post the devastating natural disasters like the earthquake in Bhuj and tsunami in Tamil Nadu. In his leisure time, Gurpreet's passion and keen eye for design leads him to indulge in an impressive collection of restoration of vintage cars. His most satisfying restoration till date and the pride of his collection is the 1928 Rolls-Royce Boat Tail Phantom One. Gurpreet enjoys being connected to his alma mater by virtue of his being the current chairman, a chairperson of the Alumni Association Faculty of Architecture, SEPT University, Ahmedabad. I welcome Gurpi Singh on board this webinar and invite him to share his presentation. Over to Gurpi, please. Good morning, everybody, my fellow panelists and our moderator. Many thanks to the Canadian Wood Team, ICBC, and the sponsor, RTS, for this wonderful webinar. Thanks a lot, uh, Architect and Mahesh, for your very insightful and wonderful presentation. I almost feel like a class 12 student, you know. As we all know that wood is God's own building material, renewable, sustainable, negative carbon footprint, and biodegradable. We in the Indian subcontinent have had a long historical tradition of building with wood. All the way down south to Kerala, the coastal belt, into the hills, Himachal, Bhutan, Nepal, etc. We have palaces, temples and zones, four to five hundred years old. Now we need to revive this tradition all over again. There has been a global resurgence of building with wood. The ecosystem for wood construction in India is now in place through educated vendors, structural engineers and proof consultants. Building in wood is not only cost effect for climate and ease of construction under adverse working conditions. My, working pre uh, my presentation today is for the young architects and the students aspiring to build in wood. We will be sharing our journey of design, the thought process, construction and details in this presentation. For easier understanding, I have classified our projects under three heads covering various typologies. 
small span structures essentially residential in nature medium spans are institutional projects and large span structures 15 meters and above these structures and building typologies are essentially derived from two of our large projects number one is the world environment school course with sustainability at its core it's a 130 acre campus 6 lakh square feet contemporary in design engineered with engineered wood design and detailing of this project is over we are ready to start construction post monsoon second project is the royal academy bhutan which is a 260 acre campus 9 lakh square feet engineered wood has been used in a traditional way here i'll share the construction processes and the nearly nearly complete buildings here the both these projects were awarded to us through invited design competitions in my presentation i wish to highlight that wood has a very strong design personality as architect n mahesh has just reflected it gives the project a distinct character and identity with its superior aesthetics the two projects that i share with you today have a distinct character one is contemporary and the other is traditional wood is very versatile and adaptable we can have multiple structure options to achieve long spans with engineered wood usage of green wood to lumber to blue lamb etc also i would emphasize in my presentation the ease of construction its offsite prefabrication and quick assembly at site here we will begin with large span structures this one is a 15 meter uh, it's a 25 meter by 60 meter uh, dining hall at the world environment school core this is how the building sits atop the mountain edge with two levels for the laundry and the kitchen below and the main dining hall at the top that's where uh, timber lends a distinct character to the building here is a section of the dining hall with its curved roof give to give you an idea about the volume that it closes and it encases that's the special feeling of the dining hall for you where the columns are 12 meters apart and the roof is at two levels with mid uh, light coming in through the middle this dining hall is for 600 plus diners including teachers 600 students plus teachers now i'll in contrast here the dining hall at the royal academy bhutan which is a 30 meter by 75 meter structure for 1200 diners you know the exploded exenometric view on the left will give you an idea about the various components of the structure with the baffle walls at the bottom for inflow of rain water beneath the building as its building sits on a mountain side this is a picture of the construction here we go ahead uh, here is the service entry from the rear and with the dining hall at the upper level the main entry uh, into the dining hall for 1200 uh, diners here the columns are 15 meter apart and also through the middle we take in the light the middle section of the roof also permits ventilation and uh, this twin level of a uh, height gives a very nice uh, volumetric uh, dimension to the space there are six petals that hold the entire ceiling with one compression member as you can see in the middle holding the uh, main beam these uh, petals are held together by steel connectors no more than 6 mm to 10 mm which are very light for this size of a structure and span these are some ridge junctions again you can see the lightness and the uh, of the materials now now the academy building at the royal academy as a part of the large span structures here we have a 260 acre campus with all its components as you can see on the site plan an aerial view of the same campus under construction as we land into paro airport this is a roof structure of the academic core for you to get an idea about the roofs and the courtyards and the built mass versus uh, spaces that's when you lay this on the side with enjoy this enjoying its majestic views and vistas this is how the main academic core nestles in nature atop the mountain ridge uh, to a suitable climatic orientation which is the longer sides along the north and south this is what you term as harmony with nature now the main building the utsi building is seven floors high at the core of the academic core what you see on the right is the proposed utsi while on the left the building under construction this photograph is about 6 months old 
and uh, the build has surpassed our expectations. You can see the large oversized roof in engineered timber. Now I wish to emphasize the ease of construction here, where while the concreting has just got over, the roof structure is in place, the inner uh, courtyards, uh, corridors, etc., done in timber are all in place, while the podium concreting is in progress. Inner courtyards done in timber in a traditional manner. Columns, beams, brackets for you. This is a large traditional window to get sun deep into the inner areas of the academy. Green wood carving, because carving can only be done in green wood. So is joinery very important in green wood, which is being done here. This is a long span blue lamp beam. Now I will come to the sports center at the World Environment School, which is a large pen structure, 50 meters by 75 meters. Uh, in fact, we designed two structures. We'll keep one for another webinar. I'll focus on the one on the left that we see as the sports center. Here is a conceptual sketch of the uh, sports center. With the columns are 35 meters apart. Uh, actually, to explain this entire structure, you have to understand the structural uh, 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 design of this where I share the bending movement diagram with you where the columns 35 meters atop, uh, apart have a inverted truss sitting on top of them where the central beams come and cast a load known as load A. This load A is cancelled by a tension cable as load A and the compressive forces are taken care of by a simple cable that is load C while the two beams nullify each other at the ridge line cancelling. So thereby nullifying these forces, the structure becomes very light and uh, here there are some study models and the alternative study models uh, that were proposed. Now you can get an interior view of how light the structure is with minimal member sizes, tension cables which are barely visible. Acoustics and inbuilt lighting in a timber structure is never a challenge. It's very easy and uh, helpful. On the left, you will see the louver here. The uh, loose end of the truss has been used as a tension member to provide for these louvers and makes a, a strong architectural element. Now, the Royal Academy of Bhutan, which is a 50 meter by 75 meter structure, again encompassing three basketball courts. Here, we used a waterproof to keep the snow load off. Some study models of the latest work that we proposed at the building under construction at site presently. This will give you an idea about the large scale inside space that we have. These tapering reinforcement bar will carry a beam onto which the roof structure will come and rest itself. This truck in the previous photograph was for, was for scale for you to get an idea about the largeness of the scale. Here the lattice work is about 4 meters each and the ceiling is free from this lattice framework which gives it a very beautiful aesthetic. Now, this entire blue lamination for the Royal Academy Bhutan was done at site. I will share the entire process of timber being harvested at site to a sawmill, to a seasoning plant, to the blue lamb shed. All we got was a 20 foot container of equipment from Switzerland to help us through this entire blue lamination and engineer wood processes. You see the construction yard, you see the sawmill, and the, this is the inside of our blue lamb plant. Uh, this is a jig in place, uh, all manually done, which also helped us curve. You can see the depth of the beam being uh, uh, formed and we could do the curved members also here on the same jig, a very rudimentary humidity and temperature control mechanism with glues, etc. Here what you see is the members stacked for the multipurpose hall with human scale you will see the curved members that are uh, there, which adds to the complexity of the multipurpose hall with the steel connectors, etc. Pine laminas, so beautiful, so aesthetic. Now I'll come to the medium span structures at the academic building at the World Environment School, a very contemporary gesture. Uh, this is on a 25 degree sloping side, very modular in uh, units, classrooms. <laughs> Than the, uh, this will give you an idea as to the profile and the, the roof profile in section where our slopes are south facing and all our roofs are south facing. We've taken advantage of this, minimizing the cut and fill. 
this roof structure of our academy core is about 2 lakh square feet it has enough solar panels for our energy needs we collect enough rain water for our annual requirements this is punctuated with courtyard to save on existing road <laughs> it also encompasses between building blocks a 1200 seater amphitheater again done in timber courtyards with timber louvers the library with a long running uh, north light all along the edge of the building the materials used essentially are two one is locally quarried laterite along with timber which give it a distinct character and an identity to the project here in this project uh, because the classrooms and uh, are all modular in nature a 10 meter by 10 meter kind of a space so we developed a truss here with 3 meter overhangs on either side so overall it's a 16 meter long truss where the shear members are thicker in dimension where the shear forces are at the edges while the setter takes a steel plate with a uh, for the compression members so we developed this truss which adds to the architectural beauty and interior spaces it also gives a very distinguished identity to the project here what you see is an extension of the same truss spanning 20 meters across now these blue land trusses that we were doing we uh, talked to our structural consultant he wanted a sectional size of 9 inches by 9 inches in the middle and 9 inches by 18 inches at the edges which we felt was very heavy and very uh, visually not acceptable to us push to the wall we decided to do a uh, uh, a real scale model full scale model at the office itself you can see the jig and the turn buckles where these two girls are at work making this truss that's our team at the office uh, load testing and deflection test being conducted on this truss i am happy to share with you that we could finally get our structural engineer to agree on a size of 5 inches by 5 inches thereby minimizing the component and bringing down the cost of this truss also because 9 into 9 is 81 versus 25 which is two and a half times of saving in material components so now i'll come to the student housing at the royal academy bhutan which is a medium span structure again a sketch of the site plan this aerial picture will give you an idea about the site and the terrain that we have with the boys hostels on one side and the girls hostels lined up on the other side here the study model indicates how we negotiated slopes within a built block that's the built block under construction ramped earth and timber roof structure with timber large openings engineered wood has been used for longer spans shorter spans are in lumber that's the student housing finished for you with a south facing facade large openings that's our uh, uh, block uh, it's a good local aesthetic with ramped earth and timber same blocks boys hostel the girls hostel across the courtyard Uh, with the south side taking on the stone walls this will give you an idea about the slopes that we have negotiated with each terrace for each two blocks now i'll come to the small span structures the last uh, component in our presentation which is the faculty housing at the royal academy we had 120 houses to build on account of faculty on account of teacher training and curriculum development so these have been split into three villages here is an idea giving you a look and feel of one such village with south facing uh, ramped earth walls in between spaces uh, we used the north side was stone walls which also took the kitchen and all the services with the ramped earth on the south side with large openings to again permit sunlight that's a view of the large overhang roof how it protects the balconies traditionally crafted large overhang roofs with its bells and whistles all in place now uh, this is green wood used on the exterior for carving as well as on the interior for space now i'll share a clt this is a different project which is a retrofitting of an office building on any western road bombay here we used a 1.5 meter panel cut along this profile as you see a and b as a negative and a positive profile the positive profile uh, you know uh, helping the sun being kept out while the negative profile is on the favorable side that is the north and the south this is how it will help you to understand how the shading devices work while these louvers give shade while letting the views and vistas come through the building now our journey of timber began with this uh, house in himachal at 7 and 1/2000 feet this site overlooks a valley and a village
these houses are the houses in the village done in the local dhaji construction which is thick stone walls laced with timber to be making them earthquake proof that's our site a terrace on the right this is our house built along dhaji construction we have two large south facing dormer windows 3 meters in a equilateral triangle dimension bringing light deep into the house the two gable windows also help us uh, bring in more light into the house with the verandas that surround it this house is essentially a post and beam construction uh, where the roof is floating and it does not touch the walls to emphasize this we have the columns coming out of uh, steel shoes and they are detached from the walls kept free from the walls local construction and timber details as you see thank you so much this has been our 6 to 8 years of journey into timber thank you thank you gurpreet for your wonderful and thoughtful presentation this brings me to our final panelist of the day architect kamal malik he needs no introduction not only he is well known to both the students and practitioners of architecture but he is equally well known among the leaders of real estate hospitality hospitality and every other industry which wants to execute a building project born and raised in shimla kamal grew up grew up in a beautiful embrace of nature every day even today his work is truly inspired by nature essentially through its principle and processes founder and principal architect of malik architecture he completed his architecture studies at the school of planning and architecture in delhi since inception over 35 years ago his firm has worked towards developing a contemporary design syntax wherein architecture is a synthesis of ecology and spirit ecology implying a seamless cohesive and integrated approach to design and spirit implying balance understanding and tranquility his firm's work includes a repertoire of of residential commercial r&d healthcare hospitality educational cultural institutional and master planning projects malik architecture has won numerous design competitions and is the recipient of over 100 national and international awards the firm's work has also been featured in over 300 publications both domestic and overseas kamal is a celebrated and sought after speaker and continues to lecture on diverse subjects ranging from sustainability to research education healthcare and hospitality i welcome architect kamal on board this webinar and invite him to share his presentation over to kamal please thank you very much um i think the subject being wood uh for me wood is synonymous with the tree the tree with the forest the forest with nature and that brings us to us man who is an intrinsic part of nature something we have forgotten so the the and uh, my you've already said that that my entire childhood up in the himalayas was my bonding with nature and that's always been my guide i would uh, and what does meaning uh, what does it uh, mean to say has been my guide i firmly believe and as i grow older this thought is reinforced that we i become more and more a catalyst than a doer i would go to a site i observe i watch i also go with reverence to nature and saying that please guide me so i will run you by a few projects they are diverse and they are also in zones or areas where traditionally wood has been used in all of them we 
and i will not repeat this as we go along that we go to any particular site we will have a full matrix of understanding the past not only the materiality but also the sociology of course the climate and so on and so forth we will learn from that but our response will be will be very contemporary the syntax and the response to that will be very contemporary because and i don't uh, i mean i'm not getting into the esoteric but my guru would always say and would get very unhappy if he found me repeating something so it was said you please go this is your own journey and that's it so therefore okay now we can move to site 1 uh, this is a plot in alibagh uh densely wooded as you can see from the lower picture and the eggs that you see which are uh, marked in black were the kind of spaces left between the trees where we could build so that's the first thing one does is don't cut a tree understand the canopy of the tree understand the height of the tree and so on how light is filtering through the tree and that's how our response is that we get these bubbles okay you can build here and then we draw a line as to how you can connect it you know it's like seeing that when you see you know a necklace you see the beads but you don't see the invisible thread so if you get into that this is that kind of invisible thread that weaves through the trees that binds it together next this is a plan which actually has been generated from that bubble next the drawings roof now you can see the lower part how each of the junctions because of the trees starts to become peculiar and has to be designed separately if you can see the lower part 1 2 3 4 they are all completely separate because of their context and because of the trees so we've had to we don't have a typical detail we've had to sort of uh, you know make this absolutely specific to a situation okay. now uh detailing one understanding tradition i talked about it you have mangalore tiles used in the konkan area for centuries and beautifully used top and bottom with a air cavity in between but the wood member used is only one so there was no need for me to reinvent something which has been going on beautifully for centuries you have to take care of the slopes which is very very important you know and this is a common mistake that people make but after that we started to be inspired by the tree itself by the trunk of the tree and the branches and that inspired us to start to see how we could support this roof which was quite conformist with this kind of a structure which is more representing the trunk and the branches next you can see more details as to how this process moved on and the working details next now also how light manifests itself by placing glass bricks at some of the removing some of the tiles next now go back Yeah, okay move on yeah now you can start to see how this structure begins to manifest at one point on the right it's almost stuck the ground and it's wonderful when it's raining outside and there is wind it's a wonderful shelter for you to be outdoors bone dry and yet be enjoying you know the 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 the, the landscape uh, you can see how the light percolates into here there's a second frame you can see how it changes now this is what the the you know your dialogue with the sun is taking place which uh, you know as an architect it's very important when we talk about nature so this is how the sun is talking to us and moving and changing that space continually through the day next yeah you can see how the trees puncturing through uh, the roofs and so on yeah uh also use of materials now where we felt that we used we needed to use an exposed concrete wall 
it's been shown as exposed concrete. Where it's wood, it's wood, and so on. So really an honesty in terms of use of materials. Next. Now, here you can get a very good idea of the wood structure, the water body, which actually, and the ghat, which you know we know is a timeless concept in India, and a piece of abstraction, which is almost like a piece of sculpture sitting at the end, which is the gym. Now the gym, as you can see, is a very contemporary element come into our lives. It, it has never been there before. So we thought, let's place it as a piece of sculpture, have a little bit of fun. Next. Yeah, you can see how uh, the geometries and, yeah. Go on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we can jump to project number two, which is Lanavla, and very, very close to my house there. And it's, it's a beautiful hill, uh, very close to Morgali Fort. There are six of Shivaji's forts here and three Buddhist caves. Uh, the, the site is a plateau with slopes on both sides, but extremely steep and completely wooded. It's difficult today to even walk through it. Now, the, it, it, I mean, to contemplate building there without cutting into, without cutting any roads, without doing retaining walls, without desecrating the hill. And also, my horticulturist told me that the topsoil is not more than four to five inches. So he said, even if you remove the shrubs, you'll find that erosion will take place. Now, this is where the architect starts to become very sensitive of things at, a, at an early stage. You can see how steep the site is. So how did we try and resolve this issue of constructing? And the process of construction ultimately to become the area, uh, the, the, the way the guests would move here. So you can see here, we've given an elevator stack, very much like you would do, let's say, for an you know, for a 16 story building. So you have, let's say at floor four, it stops, eight, it stops, 12, it stops, 16, it stops. And then with bridges, you connect to the rooms at that particular level, which are hoisted off the ground. And you will see that in a subsequent uh, study. But yeah, so that's where it is. So you connect this with bridges, used for construction and ultimately used by the guests. Now you can see this is how it ultimately would look. And also the underside of these bridges have actually been pre-ducted, which means all my pipes, sanitary pipes, water pipes, electrical cables are already pre-done and will be connected into these units. It almost becomes a Lego assembly. Here we've been helped a lot by the engineers of Canadian Wood. And the status of the project is that one of these mock-ups is going on in a workshop. And we intend to bring these and then assemble them on a site. That's the, the, the program. Next. You can see uh, the detail, the working drawings. Now, uh, we jump very quickly to Bhutan. You already had some experience with Bhutan. We have uh, four projects there. Uh, three of them are resorts, and one of them is a community housing scheme. So I'll run you through the resort at Paro. It's a beautiful site. It's on the river, and uh, you can see the river there and some pictures of the river. Absolutely picturesque site. Uh, yeah. Now, that's the actual picture of the river, and that's our response with the architecture, with wood and rammed earth. So we, we have actually... Um, used two fields which have been used in Bhutan and a rammed earth and wood. And the only thing that we've tried to again change the syntax by going totally with wood. So instead of getting the typical response that they have to the architecture there, we, we have you know, sort of modulated that, we've altered that to an extent whilst maintaining the elevation features that they require before that they don't give you any clearance. Next. Now you can see here that 
we wanted the ground to be completely free so every guest can actually see the river as they encounter the hotel as they enter it now here i was inspired being in uzbekistan in a mosque where there were 1100 columns which were entire trees here it is the mosque was burnt down by genghis khan so each of the villagers bought one column and you can see it's almost like a toothpick the slenderness and beauty of of these that inspired me to actually to to almost look at this as a forest you know uh, uh, as a concept of supporting these blocks which are suspended in the sky next yeah that's how it works so inspiration sometimes from uzbekistan yeah now this is the rammed earth concept that how we are working with rammed earth this is an old chotan which is on the site which is being preserved so there is there is this balance between what was what is and uh, one does pay respect to what was next this is the plan yeah these are some of the inspirations you see this is how they did a bridge you can see it left and you can see it here and then when we did the lobby i told my engineer this is how i'm going to use the supports it's very contemporary this is all rammed earth this is wood but you see how the supports can be designed and so on so we change the typical language whilst using the same materials next yeah this is a section which shows you the river the list uh, the, li the lifted blocks and the rammed earth next this is how we've dealt with the elevation tried to deal with everything in wood yeah i conclude with uh, no sorry there is there is there is one more project uh, this is a housing that we are doing now very steep site again 30 homes and a community center you can see how steep this is now here self reliance self sustaining which means we have the earth which comes out of the cut and fill and then we have the wood period and that's how uh, the, you know this will look like they are all three to four bedroom apartments they are done at three levels as they cut through the slope and uh, then you have these typical elements which are required you know there and uh, yeah that's how it looks that's the living dining the horizontal space and that's the three level vertical space yeah that's how it looks yeah you can see how the wood has been kind of used that's the actual river down and yeah okay i conclude it just 2 minutes with with my own house why i am doing this is because house one that you saw was done 15 years ago house two which you are seeing here is 5 years back so uh, the lessons learned in house one some of them were employed here but this is also a very steeply banked site and it's got three streams which you see in dotted it's called the house of the three streams uh, and uh, steeply slow uh, slope here we uh, if you see the response next yeah that because of the steep slopes and the fact that we wanted the roof to be connected so that in the rains we didn't have to run out and then go to a room we the the geometry became immensely complex that meant that even though we wanted to use kaula we could not because you can't cut these ceramic tiles in all kinds of shapes so here the roofs became zinc because of the function next you can see how it starts to work down the hill yeah you can see the complexity of roof forms but this is happening only because of topography it's not because i like it or somebody else liked it yeah now you can see how these geometries formed these complex geometries and how they intertwined how the support started to happen lessons learned the 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 quantum of steel we used here uh, as composite became half of what we had in in uh, in the first house next now you can see some of the images some inspired by the forts of shivaji this is a local black uh, a black stone trap stone which is used in all of shivaji's forts so you can see how this is moving through yeah Okay. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Kamal, for an excellent presentation. We enjoyed it uh, thoroughly, um, particularly your few projects in, in Bhutan and your own house. Uh, I pass it over to Nirmala, please. Thank you, Gurdev. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, hi, my name is Nirmala Thomas. I'm the Director of Market Development at Canadian Wood. Uh, basically, a big thank you for taking time out to attend this Canadian Wood webinar today. I think we all agree here that the presentations around architecture with wood in India were very informative and allowed us to view some of the wonderful works these renowned architects could present and with the experience behind them, a uh, big thank you once again on behalf of everybody present here. So now we'll be getting into the next phase of the webinar, panel discussion. This will be moderated by Professor Gurdev along with our presenter speakers as the panel members. Your Professor Gurdev will be discussing key highlights from each speaker presentations and addressing the same to the panel members for their views and opinions. Without taking much of your time, I now would like to invite Professor Gurdev, along with architect N. Mahesh, architect Kamal Malik, and architect Gurpreet to start the panel discussion. I request all panel members to switch on their video, please. Over to you, Gurdev. Thank you. Thank you, Nirmala. Uh, I'll say a few words uh, looking at the presentation and then start with some questions. Um, this uh, is addressed to architect Mahesh. It is nice to see the inspiration you have taken from timber architecture in Deva, particularly Travancore Dynasty's work of 16th century in Pradhanapuram um, Palace and Trivindram and the area around. Thanks for showing some excellent work in good architecture and also appreciate your effort to push, push reforestation in India. Um, there, there is a issue here. Uh, there's one term which is being used by, by architect Mahesh and architect would be in a completely different way. The term is, is green wood architecture. I'm sorry, I, sorry to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, Gurdevji, it's echoing. I'm not sure whether it's clear to all the panel members. Yeah, no, I, everything is switched off here. Okay. Uh, can you understand the questions being raised? Is it clear I, to everyone? I will start again. The question is that architect Mahesh and architect Gurpreet, they both use the word green wood or green wood architecture in a totally different context. Uh, when you use the word green wood architecture. Uh, thank you, good day. Uh, what I mean by green wood is reforested, scientifically reforested timber, which is done in most of the uh, countries where timber is plenty, including Canada, including uh, Norway, Sweden, uh, even Far East countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, especially Burma where the timber is um, uh, a very controlled item. You cannot chop off a tree just like that in any of these countries. It's a, it's a crime, almost a crime. So uh, uh, there are uh, agencies like PEFC and FSC, Forest Stewardship Council, which has its headquarters in Germany, Bonn, in which about uh, 80, 90 countries are signatories. The, the Forest Stewardship Council stipulates certain protocols for using reforested green timber. Some countries call them green timber, some call, like Indonesia, they call them, by Indonesian uh, Wood uh, Council, calls them legal timber, legal, law, L-E-G-A, L-E-G-A. So some people call it eco-friendly, uh, timber, some people call it reforested timber, green timber, so it's all, it's only the nomenclature. Nevertheless, yeah, yeah, timber that we should promote in the world so that our great children and great great grandchildren have the forest wealth should be green timber that is reforested timber. As I always say, I always quote Thomas Friedman, 
in his book, he has said that unlike steel and stone, which are cradled to graveyard material, cradle to graveyard, timber is a cradle to cradle material. Because if you uh, quarry, uh, after a, if you mine a stone quarry, a limestone quarry or a iron ore quarry, the place is gone. It is gone forever. You can't even use it as a um, garbage area. Whereas in timber, you can, if you scientifically reforest it, you can use timber uh, and reuse timber and uh, it is a cradle to cradle material. I hope I have answered your question. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to ask the same question to Gurpreet now. Um, when you use the word green timber, what do you imply? Actually, my understanding of green timber, actually it's very interesting. My understanding of green timber is entirely different. What I understand green timber is that historically timber was grown locally in a certain geographical location with similar uh, weather conditions. It was harvested there and used there without uh, too much of moisture loss, etc. Axed into place, joinery done into place, and put in place, you know, which is the example that we have in the Indian subcontinent. Carving is possible only in green timber because dry timber, the carving, etc., chips, you know. Also, what happens with wood, uh, when we, especially green timber, is because it dries it over a period of time gradually in one direction of the grains, not in two directions. So the joinery has to be such that you have to have an understanding of if the consumption has to be done in a manner that both of them dry in the same direction, thereby tightening the joint and not loosening the joint. Also, nails are be driven in green timber. What one requires that we learn in Bhutan is that you need master craftsmen who have an understanding of the local timber. Uh, to uh, work on this timber. And in Bhutan, we were, you know, fortunate to have his majesty, master craftsmen uh, helping us on this. This is my understanding of green timber, which is locally harvested, used for carving, etc. Thank you, Guru. Now, just, a, just a word of appreciation because I didn't say that in the beginning because of the continuity of questions. I'm considering, in your case, considering regular lumber for small and then engineered wood for large and structure is extremely thoughtful, I believe. Um, and another issue that's very important to me is that you've been using steel in a very limited way for the connections and high end and silos. And the rest is also, I think that these two issues are um, very, very important issues. And, Probably your work did reflect some of these things. Now my question to you is that it is strange that you divided your present referring to span, whereas most everybody else generally um, refers to typology when you make a presentation. You have been talking about span as a typology. What is the reason for that? Actually, I think uh, when you are talking of timber, uh, and you talk span wise, I think you're being true to timber. That's the way, uh, you know, I would express it. Now, while using timber, you are using various kinds of timber to green timber, which has a limitation in its span to dried timber or to timber that comes from uh, a forestation like Canada, etc. Where it is, so you can increase your spans to blue lamp to engineered timber, you know. So we are using steel connectors in a minimal way. Also, it is very important to be true to glue lamination also, which is what we faced in, uh, you know, Bhutan as well as in Pur. In both these locations, the roads could not take larger containers, more than 20 feet. You know, it couldn't take a 40-foot container where we could, you know, import a glue lamp beam and put it in place. So uh, being true to the glue lamp business, we had to not use steel connectors in a false way, but design the whole thing around that limitation of six meter members, etc. Because in Pur, we needed to get our entire scheme vetted by proof consultants, you know. Unlike Bhutan, where we had the freedom of uh, our own structural engineers. 
Hence, this whole thing of distinction span wise. And it's also a conscious choice to use a raw lumber or lumber and blue lamb to optimize the cost of a project because the price differential is about three times. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm sure, Kamal, you're waiting. Uh, but let me first ask one more question to, to architect Mahesh and I'll, I'll come to you. My question to, to architect Mahesh is that you, the way you use the timber in Kerala or um, Kurg, which are comparatively highly humid places, you're using the timber in the same way in, in, in Rajasthan, in Pushkar. Now, how do you differentiate? Because one is a highly dry area and one is a very humid area. How do you differentiate between the way you use timber between the two areas? Uh, uh, the second enemy is a dampness. The termites, the dampness, the dampness is not an enemy in Rajasthan, as you rightly said. But termites are a huge problem in a place like uh, Rajasthan because it's a very uh, uh, arid place. Then, of course, the uh, um, fire and uh, warping. So, therefore, what we do is that we give a lot of importance to, in Kerala, if we do a project where there are a lot of rain, we are doing a project in Sarlahi, in Kathmandu, um, uh, in the, uh, the, by, by the side of Bakhmati River. We have used, like in Kerala projects, we have used huge overhangs, Gurde. The overhangs protect the walls. But whereas you don't have to use such a huge overhang in, the, in a place like uh, Saputara, where we are doing a project on the border of Maharashtra, Gujarat, and uh, in Pushkar, or a project which we are doing in uh, uh, Bhopal. The advantage is that, so depending on the climatic condition, and the biggest uh, threat, the, the nature's threat, we have to use a right, because if for fire, you have to use fire retardant cold brush applications. There are many fire retardant applications available. For dampness, you have to use two pack or three pack water-based polyurethane. There are, for dampness, you can also use linseed oil, but you have to do it every two years. But polyurethane, maybe you can do every four years or five years. Then we can, for, um, there are a lot of anti termite treatments, even using our uh, local herbs, uh, yeah, mixing it with diesel. I'm doing it uh, for my Canadian, uh, sorry, uh, my Bell Museum. I have used diesel mixed with uh, local plant, and uh, that is a very great uh, termite prevention. So there are um, treatments required, and uh, however, having said that, Canadian timber. Your uh, technical people from the Canadian people, um, uh, people like uh, Peter and uh, others, don't, uh, uh, Pranesh, don't recommend much of treatment. So they say that uh, Canadian timber does not need protective uh, treatment uh, as much as possible. But I don't know, maybe if you want the longevity to be beyond 30, 50 years, we may have to keep uh, protecting them and maintaining them. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mahesh. Uh, coming to, to Kamal, please. Uh, I believe uh, the house in Alibag uh, has wonderful relation between inside and outside. I appreciate it. Uh, in fact, the boundaries have been blurred um, beautifully. House also has very unpredictable dynamic quality about it because at every corner, every angle, you do not know what is going to happen next, and which is, very, which is very nicely done. Very thoughtful use of materials, particularly in the detailing, the interface of different materials has come together very, very nicely, including the interface of live elements, like trees, have also been accommodated. So, in, I, I greatly appreciate it. My question uh, here is a bit different, because we are talking about timber here. My question is, your use of, of uh, steel is, is very heavy in, in the first house in Alibag, where you, which is almost like two plates of one inch by eight inch. So you could probably call it more of a steel building than a timber, 
timber cladded steel building. But in the second house, um, I couldn't see the detail, but you're saying that you reduced it. Now my question here is, when you take timber, why is it not possible that we use timber honestly and try to do the best, take its full structural uh, function from the timber rather than just clad it for, for the aesthetics? Sorry, I'm being blunt, but I think it is important to understand why only cladding and why not the actual structure, which is timber? So uh, the answer is in two parts. And uh, when we did house one about 15 years ago, or, or whereabouts, the idea of being able to structurally free ourselves, coupled with the fact that at that time, there was no real glue lamb and so on available here. We looked at a composite language. We did tests and we found that the structure was deflecting until the wood was put there. So that we tested. But I'm not being partisan here, but our engineer was a local person here. And I must admit, as I think one has to be truthful here that the steel was excessive. And by the time we got to the last house, we had gotten in touch with a German firm called CEN, who actually had a specialized software for doing composite design. So that's where we could bring everything far more slenderer whilst still being able to deal with the complex geometries that the site was requiring. Thank you. Um, my, my next question, I would like to, uh, to talk about the, the, the bridge which Mahesh has done. I think um, uh, it's a beautiful structure with, the, with, the, with the, the stream flowing below and the landscape going through and, and you're going across the bridge to, 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 uh, to enhance, to, to kind of include the entire space of the valley into the hotel here. Um, I have two questions there, again, very similar to what I've been asked, what I've asked. Um, Kamal, that you've used, again, you've used a lot of steel, so you're painting it slightly brownish to make it look like timber, but you're using a lot of steel there. Um, is it, was it only the structural reason or you intentionally wanted to use steel and use timber only internally? Um, uh, that is one question. And in the same project, you have used a lot of circular rings, the ring beams in terms of the entry, the, 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 the reception hall and everything. How do you make uh, ring beams in timber? Um, I, I try to understand that. Yeah, I will answer the first question first. Good day. The, yes, uh, the, um, uh, the project was very challenging in terms of uh, ecology because it's a coffee plantation in terms of backward integration of hospitality. So the, 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 the guests get a coffee trail and all. So we had to retain maximum of existing landscape. In fact, my architect, uh, Nick Proud uh, from uh, Bali, I told him, I don't want a manicured landscape. It should be the, uh, the coffee plantation and the rainforest effect should flow down the building. I don't want a landscape. I don't want any bloody roses or any flowers. It should not look as if I engage the landscape architect. I don't want landscape. I'll give you my fees, but don't come in. So he did a fantastic job. Now, the question you are asking is very interesting question, very demanding. In timber structures like my uh, colleagues uh, Kamal and Gurpreet have wisely done, you have to sometimes use composite uh, technology. You cannot use only timber. That you should be damn sure that it is in a dry place. In a place like Kurt, which has got eight months of rain, in a damp place, we have to uh, make sure that the timber doesn't get damp, especially at the footing level. 
So, and for, moreover, the steel bridge is not visible to the guest. So I thought uh, there should be a cost element. Supposing I made a steel bridge of 100 meters, 120 meters, it would have caused a bomb and my client would have thrown me out of uh, the project. So I had to draw a line between using how much of timber to be used and how much steel to be used. So therefore, it was a compromise, like Kamal said about uh, your previous question. We architects need to draw a line between what is technology, what is architecture, aesthetics, and what is cost element. Because economy is very, very important to Indians. We are not Europe or America, where you can do fancy timber structures. We have to be worried, like you said, that our timber supports, the timber roof, the timber flooring, everything should be very, um, um, you don't have, you should not have to use interior money, too much money for an interior design. The timber, like you have seen the other two panelists, fantastic architecture, because they didn't use marble, granite, and stainless steel, like we also don't use in our office, because it should be very soft architecture and natural architecture. Your second question about ring. Um, you see, in a hospitality, because I am mostly doing hotel projects like the, my colleagues, in hospitality, um, the arrival experience of a guest is very important. When he comes in the car or in a buggy to the reception, he should feel a wow factor. Wow, where have I come? That, you see, because I wanted to create a fanciful roof in timber, which should be according to many guests there, especially foreigners, they say it's a music, it's like a piano music in uh, timber form. I, I am not using those glorious words, but <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that this, um, um, the timber circular roof is difficult to make, but easy to make provided your drawings are good. As I have already mentioned, a timber structure is only as good as a timber drawing. If the architect is not good, if the architect is monkeying with the drawings and if he has a poor detailing, look at the fabulous drawings you have seen. I myself have not seen such good draw drawings in uh, uh, that Kamal and Gurpreet have shown. Fantastic drawing. I also make beautiful drawings, but these guys are great. So it is a drawing. Any building is as good as an architect or the design. Any timber is as good as a timber detailing, timber drawing, and the working drawing. Thank you. Thank you, Mahesh. Thank you. Now, uh, there, there, but one question, uh, which I think is open to all the panelists, and you're all free to answer. Um, it is regarding okay. finish and regarding the, the termite issue. Regarding finish, the question is, would you like to go natural with oils and natural materials, or would you like to go synthetic? Uh, on your timber? That is one question. And the second one is the same thing in termite. You can pour a whole lot of chemical in the soil and call it termite proof. Or if the Japanese do a method of keeping the termite away without, without adding a lot of chemicals to your, your plants, your plants and, 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 and soil around. So what is your stand on these two issues? You can start, anybody, whoever wants to start. Please. Kamal, would you like to start? Yeah, okay. Uh, as far as the look is concerned, uh, I'm all for the natural look and feel. For example, even on the interiors, we are simply using seed oil because you can get to see the grains, you can see, you know, feel the wood. And if it did, colors over time, it's not really my problem. We're not worried. And I have found that nine tenths of my clients are not going, are not overtly perturbed by the fact that the wood has started to gray, right? And so on. They don't want it, uh, you know, sparkling and shining all the time, right? Uh, so that is one part of it. As regards the other question, see, we are we are, as a design firm, we try as far as possible to stay away from chemicals and so on. So as much as we can avoid it. 
So um, whatever treatment that is there, which is essential, but you know, overdosing things with chemicals. Now this is also, well, you've talked about wood, but I can talk about plant material that we have. We have only organic uh, you know, fertilizers, manures. So it's actually a way of looking at life. So we think that whatever technology we get, and then we can get things where the chemical uh, uh, input is the, is the least or the minimum is desirable as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Mr. Mahesh wants to say something. Uh, you can also uh, do one thing, uh, Kamal. What we can do is to um, have, if it is country wood and even soft wood, um, I'm going to ask uh, Pranesh to do that. Uh, we should also think of using askew hickson, askew treatment, askew or borax, um, chemical treatment other than kill and seasoning. Because it, um, my feeling is that um, if, I, if you do uh, chemical treatment uh, under a, a pressure, uh, pressure vessel, like you do kill and seasoning under a pressure vessel, the uh, immunity level, like you talk of COVID, immunity, because everybody is talking of immunity. The immunity of the timber to fight the termite, I'm sure will be 10 times of a raw timber. But nevertheless, the timber will not, cannot be more than 50 mm one side. One side can be 50 mm, two inches, the other. But then if you use blue lamb or uh, cross laminated timber, that problem will not come. So the question of termite is not a serious issue. Like Kamal said, clients are not bankrupt as long as we take care of it from the foundation detail. It all depends on how you detail out the floor level because uh, termite comes from the earth upward. It cannot come from the roof downward. So the only way is to do, see that like uh, they have used steel shoes for the timber uh, pillars, most of them. And you have to do like that and prevent the termite entering the timber at the ground level. Thank you. Would you like to say something, Gurpreet? Karen, uh, you know, I'll uh, take on the first part first, which is the protection for the timber. In Bhutan, we were very fortunate because Bhutan has, we have to protect the timber from UV rays also, you know. UV rays in Bhutan are very strong apart from other things. So in Bhutan, they have local traditional methods of protecting wood with burnt sina colors, paints, etc., vegetable oils, which protect the timber. So we've used and adopted all those methods here. And you would have seen the dining hall having a certain, uh, which is done in natural oils, you know, uh, having a clue. Now, when uh, talking about uh, termites, uh, termites are generally below 5,000 feet. So we did not face a problem with Bhutan at all in terms of termites, but in school, termite is highly, it's a very serious issue. Especially in our case, we are not using the chemicals because we are collecting the rainwater that runs off the slopes for our annual requirements. So we could not have used the uh, chemicals, etc., to kill the termites. So, like uh, uh, you know, mentioned earlier, it is the foundations and our timber structures are essentially in the roofs with the, and no posts that are in timber. And also by using blue lamb and other methods uh, and wooden species that are termite resistance would help us uh, overcome the termite problem. So I think overall as a construction industry, we require to be careful, but it's not uh, that bad a situation. Thank you. Um, I think we are running out of time. Just one last question um, to, to Kamal. Um, I'm, this is regarding Lonawala Resort. Uh, I believe it's uh, the way it is. It, it comes up. It would be beautiful. The, the slatted uh, boxes coming up and the windows opening and closing, showing the life. Um, I think and the connection at the back instead of cutting the ground um, uh, to make passages. You are everything is floating uh, and, and the elevators connect to that almost as, as I was looking at, remind me of Shimla, the way the elevator goes up and connects to different level from lower mall to upper mall level. Now, my question here is, when you use um, so much of wood uh, and in baton form as an external surface, 
what how do you select wood like that how would you select wood which is going to be always exposed uh, to nature how would you select that wood well uh, we as you know i mentioned one thing that we are not a hundred percent sure of the wood so we are doing a mock-up subjected to a particular monsoon because there is very heavy rain very heavy rain and wind now i have used old wood in my house which is which came from ship breaking from kandla and also some sal and that over the years has has matured and has performed wonderfully i have virtually very little of even expansion and contraction even though with the wind the water is hitting the uh, thing and they are very big shutters i have 10 foot uh, shutters so so as regards soft wood i would like to see the performance and then take a call because my experience up till now has been with hard woods yeah no yeah, good good look i i think the our time is running out here and we have to pass it on uh, uh, for the next event but i just i'm not supposed to say but i like to add my experience into it uh, historically red cedar has been one of the excellent timber which with very little finish can survive a long time i mean it has survived over 5 600 years as as roof shingles you know so when you make your experiment please try one in in red cedar also and see how it performs in time you know? no we are using red cedar sorry to interrupt we are using red cedar for the outside yeah, it is my opinion uh, i should not be giving this opinion in this in this no, forum no no he is there uh, peter knows it's, it. it's a very good it already has thank you so much um, for for discussion i hand it over to to nirmala and we start our second session later thank you thank you thank you gurudev and honorable panel members uh, this indeed was a very interesting and knowledgeable discussion basically a lot is left to be still learned i guess the audience will agree with me on this uh, just sharing something what research has shown us india has long been admired for its old style of architecture whether it is a temple or a fort palace or a monument most of them have been built with wood or stone wood is a naturally naturally occurring material and it has been used over centuries i think this itself uh, you can see it in examples in india whether it is the padmanabham palace in kerala one of the oldest and well preserved wooden palace architecture in india i think architect n mahesh will agree with me uh, or the hadimba temple in manali a four story wooden structure basically constructed in the 15th century or why go so far you can even go closer home vishram bagwada in pune uh, residence of peshwa bajirao uh, all these are basically works of art in wood uh, wood's durability has been known to serve longest in structures as known as to man so globally too there are many such examples you name us canada japan you still see structures being built with wood there's always more to learn with building in wood uh, i know all in the audience would have many questions in their mind what we have been trying to do is take all the questions which are there in the q and a panel club the common ones together and bring the answers to you so professor gurudev is actually doing that he's we will be clubbing these questions we will not be addressing each question individually but collating the questions clubbing them and answering them to you uh, professor gurudev uh, please let me know if you are ready to take yeah, on yeah i'm ready i'm ready yeah. yes please. please go ahead yeah thank you okay now look um, a whole lot of questions are coming uh, from the participants here um and we are trying to put them together to to kind of a form question but i can't um, and also there are lots of notes of can i can i you mind if i just uh, jump in quickly because i Please. i see there's so many questions a lot of these questions not just questions to our architects but questions about canadian wood that about, is it. um performance in india's weather conditions about humidity and climate and termites There's so many questions, and I don't think we'll have time to address all of those questions uh, one on one today. So, just one thing, I would like to encourage. 
we, I'd like to promise that we'll respond to all those questions. If we don't respond in person today, we'll respond by mail over the next couple of weeks, and we'll address all of the questions that people have sent in today. But just in general, um, in, you know, in the tone of the discussion, um, in my view, you know, this is all about design. It's all about good design. The you know, weatherproofing of a building, weather resistance to moisture, humidity, UV, sun, this is all about good design, about overhangs, about providing good drawings and good construction practices and good detailing. So all of that is there. Um, and the next thing is in regards to termites, again, it's, it's good design, but there are lots of, there are physical barriers that we can put in place and we can treat the wood uh, with, a, with a borate, as Mahesh was mentioning, so long as it's not exposed to moisture over a long period. Um, uh, and additionally, we have two species in Canadian wood that are naturally termite resistant. So for instance, in the project that Kamal is doing on the Narvila, um, he will be using uh, Western red cedar, uh, allowed to weather naturally on the exterior part of the building. And in the structural sense, he'd be using yellow cedar on decks and so on. Again, because these species are naturally durable, resistant to termites and won't decay and don't need coating. So I think, what I'm just trying to say is that covers a lot of the questions today, but we will get back to people in gen, you know, individually as well. Thanks. Okay, the question which are coming um, very diverse in many ways. Um, for one of the question which is very much repeated here is, uh, what is the average cost of timber construction compared, compared to concrete, concrete and brick structures? This is a very common, Perhaps I'll jump in on this one as well, because we, we have a little bit of experience, you know. Um, Canadian Wood, in partnership with several people in India, have built uh, timber display homes. Uh, we've built uh, wood frame construction homes and tongue and groove construction homes. Right. And uh, they're both at a different price point. So we have an idea of roughly what concrete and steel structures are costing. And uh, based on the structures that we presented at India Wood this year, uh, a, a very um, modern, contemporary, and uh, I would say, you know, above average in terms of luxury uh, wood frame house. Uh, construction cost was around about 5,000 rupees per cubic foot. And uh, for the uh, Tang and Groove solid wood house, uh, 70 millimeter wall, the cost of a Tang and Groove uh, TNG house came in around about um, 3,000 rupees per cubic foot, roughly. Now those, pro those things can vary depending on all of your fittings and fixtures and so on. But that's, that, that cost includes um, second fix. So uh, it doesn't include the foundation, but it does include uh, all the, the internal uh, plumbing, electrical uh, services and um, uh, you know, built-ins. No, thank finishing. you, that, that kind of gives the basic figure to them in their mind and they can consider it and look into detail. The, the similar question, is about life. Devji, if, uh, if before you Would you like me to, can I just answer one, uh, add to what Peter has just said? Yeah, please do. Uh, uh, you see, I mean, construction with wood uh, is of different kinds. As Peter already pointed out, you have tongue and groove uh, prefab construction, you have uh, light wood frame construction, and you also have the post and beam construction. And many a times in India, we do post and beam along with the Local wood, local brick and, and, and stone, uh, like the Marshall House shown by uh, Gurpreet in his uh, presentation. Um, all I would say is uh, to the people who are asking the first part of it, uh, well, um, I, I'll make it a little more broad banded, say from about 2000, 2002 up to 7,000. Again, as Peter pointed out, friends, as to how many bells and whistles in your uh, project, you know. So, so it, it all depends uh, what level of uh, construction it is and what kind of uh, um, uh, sophistication you want. So, so construction cost in wood also multiplies as it does in the traditional construction taking place in India as to how um, modern, how comfortable, and how. Uh, full of facilities you want it to be. But yes, um, the, the uh, cost of construction can also be controlled by the kind of uh, construction in wood you choose. Uh, bottom of the heap is the tongue and groove. 
uh, as you go up, so you can, you know, spend more on, on say, uh, wood frame construction, or you can spend a uh, uh, little less than that on maybe uh, post and beam all, all by itself in conjunction with the wood frame or by using the local brick or stone. So, yeah, I, I, so I there's a lot like of options add. open to the people as to as to control the cost and architects know exactly as to how to help control the cost and where to control the cost. Yeah. Thank you. Gurpreet, please. Yeah. Can I just come in here? See, uh, when you construct in timber, timber is very lightweight. So there is a huge saving in foundation, especially in adverse conditions. Like we were constructing in Pur, which is on a 25, 30 degree slope. Your cut and fill and your foundations are much, much lighter when you're building the roof structure in timber. Secondly, the material cost in certain difficult sites is far more. So when you offset that, that is the second thing. Third, like architect N. Mahesh emphasized, there is no need for elaborate interiors. So when you look at the overall cost, it's a very holistic way of calculating a cost uh, of timber structure. So one has to look at it from that point of view. Thank you. I think we should be able to give a picture to the to the audience. Uh, but it is you not only the building cost. Yes, yeah. yes. Just just one minute. See, just one uh, minute, please. I will. I will. People I, I just often want to talk say of this. timber and concrete buildings. See, it is like asking um, whether uh, we should eat vegetarian and non-vegetarian food. Depends what you want. Yeah, a place where you uh, need to have only a home or a two-story building or a low-density project, like uh, what me and uh, Kamal and uh, Gurpreet have done. In low-density project, especially in a, a forested wooded area, where you cannot bring concrete steel and uh, transport it to the site, timber is the only answer, especially if it is pre-engineered timber. So we cannot simply answer that question. Like if you want a five-story building, Timber is not the answer. Steel or concrete is the answer. So it is like uh, uh, the question itself is uh, uh, wrong because uh, uh, to answer it, we will have to circumvent so many issues. So timber can be, should be used where timber is, can be used. Two-story, low-density, three-story. Timber cannot be used in high-density. But regarding cost, I should tell you, if you do a wise uh, building, and if you get a good timber architect, um, like our other two friends and all of us, then you can save a lot of money on the overall construction cost, especially if you use softwood very carefully. Softwood needs to be um, used with a kid glove, unlike uh, hardwood. Hardwood, you can be a little careless, but softwood, we have to be use a kid glove. That's it. Thank you. Um, Kamal, you are the only one left out. I think you should also participate and say something to this. Yeah, you see, uh, uh, I think on the costing, the diversity, as uh, Mr. Mahesh said, is, is so much that spectrum that uh, I, would, I would tend to agree, A, that does the site require a lightweight material. I definitely cannot put in heavy foundations because then if on one hand, I'm not having retain wall, retaining walls and not having roads, and then I start digging the whole site, then again, I have a problem. So therefore, if I'm going to get these points for foundations, I have to go lightweight. Now, if I go lightweight, I have two options. Either I go with steel, but then I also need to use cladding materials. I need to close it off. There again, there are options. There are boards available, A, B, C, D, E. But according to me, if you look at the totality of the picture and do not superimpose any interiors, which you don't need to, you, can, you, you saw some of the interior studies of our hotel room. They are simply using what is structural material and stop it. And so therefore, ultimately, if you see in hotels, let's say particularly hospitality, you find the amount of expense on interior is colossal. So in India, what we do is, and which I think is completely erroneous, is we only fight on structural cost. This is ridiculous because the structure is there for 75 years. 
the interiors will change many times but the client in india only talk structural cost you know so i think we need to understand everything is relative we should look at the total we should look at site specific answers and you will then find that there is no need to to jump to a conclusion that no 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 wood structures are going to be prohibitively be you know prohibitively expensive i think that conclusion should not be foregone agreed fully agree i have uh, one more point to be added i think we are probably talking about the construction cost as it is done but we should be comparing the construction cost of a total life cycle of the building rather than now because in the life cycle you saving on heating or cooling uh, you saving on recycling the entire building could again be taken down and members use the gain to to build something new so so it is not the construction cost now but the entire cycle of the life of the building and it is that which should be compared i believe um, in canadian timber if you could somehow work out that and 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 help i think that the material will get promoted because the in the life cycle timber will turn out to be a far cheaper material than than concrete and brick all right even um, even, in the, even in the shorter term uh, good of um, you know the the opportunity cost in building um a, a group of houses in wood is is huge compared to other other materials such as concrete and steel we can build in wood in approximately one tenth, one twentieth the time it takes to do a concrete and steel project. So that cost should be taken into consideration. Um, Peter, um, I think uh, architect Mahesh uh, said that the, the building is more than four or five floor or higher. We obviously use steel or concrete, uh, but I, but what is happening is there are a lot of questions which are asking. Whether if the building goes higher, like let's say seven, eight, ten floors, uh, can you use uh, uh, timber? And we we know that we can, but how long it will take that kind of a technology to come in India? We we can, and uh, there are lots of examples in North America and Europe, as we know, using uh, engineered wood primarily, what we call mass timber. So, uh, glue lamb, CLT, um, these products are becoming very popular. Um, unfortunately, in India, there's really no commercial manufacturing of these engineered wood products at the moment. I think it's coming, uh, but certainly uh, there's no commercial manufacturing. There are some smaller enterprises, a company called Artius in Delhi, and, and Bhavan is here today. They're making glue lamp up to 10 meters long, beautiful products. Um, and a couple of other people are attempting to make um, components in glue lamp. In a, in a structural sense, in a commercial sense, for large projects, it's not easily available. And in CLT, again, not, not so available. But I think it's coming. And uh, by, through using these products, we can do multi-level buildings and lots of examples of those. It, it just comes down to cost and practicality. Right now, we pretty much have to import those products to India if we're going to use them here. Uh, just, just for the sake of the audience, uh, there is an 18-story building, which is a student's hostel called Brock Commons on the campus of University of British Columbia in Vancouver. You guys can go on the net and, and uh, search Brock Commons and you will get the details. That's, that's perhaps the tallest building uh, wooden structure today. But you will shortly have another one going up to 36 stories, which has just been commissioned. The, the, Preparatory work has started on that. So you can really go pretty tall and high with, with wood. Uh, that's the technology which has evolved over the years. But as Peter said, it probably will take some more time to come into India. Uh, though we are currently in the talks with uh, one of the premier research government agencies in Bangalore who are wanting us to help uh, bring the first uh, multi-story building into India. So we are in talks with them and hopefully going ahead into the future, we probably would be instrumental in helping the first uh, multi-story building come up in India. May not be as tall as I'm talking about in North America and other parts of the world. But yes, certainly for from Indian standards, it will be multi-story. Yes. It, it may not be very high, but it could at least go up to five, six floors. Yes, yes, and that yes. is the beginning. That would be a good beginning uh, to have in India. Yes, please. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, there is a, there are some questions which have come. Um, the 
particularly asking uh, architect Mahesh and others can also answer. Um, some are saying that why are we importing a whole lot of timber from outside? You know, uh, why are we not using Indian timber? And then there are understanding people have that uh, reforestation issue in India is being pushed uh, very hard. And even if it is get pushed now, it will take another 20, 25 years before we can harvest. So Agnit Mahesh, please, please help us in uh, answering that question. Why we are yes. dependent yeah, on- the, the answer to the question is already in the question. Um, we, are to, we are importing timber mainly. We are getting pingado from uh, Burma. We are getting Malaysian sal from Malaysia. We are getting uh, fado from uh, Africa. We are getting um, a Marandi from abroad. So we are getting all these wood mainly because India does not have a regime for grading timber and uh, 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 there is no enactment by which only uh, scientifically reforested timber should be used. There is no law in the country. But you may have a law saying that forest cannot be touched. But that is only less than 20-22% uh, of the whole forest land. But there is no law. So therefore, in India, it is very difficult to get reforested timber. If, because people also are very sensitive in using teak wood because you have to cut. Teak is wealth. Teak is gold. So you cannot afford it. And soft wood, like Canadian wood or European soft wood, are only one-sixth, one-fifth of the price of country wood. So even if you, um, the, um, the question itself is very correct because we have no graded timber, we have no green timber, we have no reforested, scientifically reforested timber. That is why we are getting timber from outside. Uh, the I may add to uh, uh, architect Mahesh, uh, we should know that India is a wood fiber deficient country. We do not have enough timber available within India to meet our own demands. And whatever forests we have today, fortunately, they are protected by the government because there was yeah. enough so we have to uh, we have to import to meet india's growing needs of timber thanks uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry uh, here i have to say that um, we need to have a reforestation regime in india in fact i have prepared a note for the prime minister and he has already got the note and if all of you say we should have even Mr. soft wood we can grow in India, but it should be uh, not grow. So it is, uh, um, in a way, uh, as of now, as you rightly said, for 25, 30 years, even if you start reforestation in the next five years, it will take 30 years to start uh, getting reforested, scientifically forest, reforested or afforested timber. So yes, therefore, yes. right now, the answer is we need Canadian wood or soft wood. No, no, I agree. Or, Mish, can you, Mish, uh, uh, architect Mish, can you, take a lead on that and, and develop a forum on which we can push the government to, to kind of start the... Uh, in fact, I'm doing it. I have about eight, nine people in my group, including Jimmy Thomas of Canadian Wood and uh, Pranesh also knows that I'm trying to spearhead it. And yeah. uh, already my note has gone to the Prime Minister about two years, three years back. But um, I still don't have a darshan to... Um, give him a presentation. But if I push it, I can because I have a friend who, is a, who has a eyes and ears of the Prime Minister. So uh, maybe if Kamal or Gurpreet know, all of us should be five, six of us and tell the Prime Minister that we need to have a reforestation. We don't have to um, uh, uh, write down anything. You only have to go to Malaysia or Indonesia and take their uh, Forest Act and uh, implement it here like we borrowed the constitution of India from Britain. So it is not very difficult. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. We have, uh, these things are there in other countries. We only have to uh, change the power of karma and all those things and uh, bring it back. So therefore it is very important. The, this is exactly why politicians are not doing this. Because they want something which can be done in five years. Because they have to come back to power. Who cares for 25 years? I'm so, sorry because to no interrupt. no politician will be living for 25 years yeah, more. Just... I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think we are running short on time. We're yeah, really we are, lovely we thoughts to... out there. But... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry we brought this issue. 
on a Canadian timber platform. No, that's okay. About, that's however, okay. Uh, however, however, you still have 30 years before uh, the that, Indian, that's, Indian that's timber comes on the market. So there's plenty of time. Uh, and thank you. I, thank I, you I would much. just like to, before you close, I would like to say that uh, I have a good news to share. Uh, the uh, deforestation or the or the decline in forest cover of India has stemmed has been stemmed by the government's uh, what do you call a restriction on harvesting in India uh, tree harvesting. So I would say this stemming decline has happened. But as uh, architect Mahesh pointed out, just a few decades we start growing again and regain our forests back. So. To that extent, yes, work needs to be done, and uh, we would we would like to support architect Mahesh in whichever way he wants. Uh, we are there, uh, though definitely, I mean, Canada till such time is uh, appropriately placed to fulfill all the uh, needs of the Canadian timber as a long-term supplier of uh, uh, certified timber from sustainable sources. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you all. Uh, we have we run out of time basically. And uh, there are lots of questions still left, and I'm sure we will end up answering them on, on the email. And, and, and definitely in a week or two down the line, everybody will get their answers. Uh, I hand it over to Nirmala for further proceedings. Thank you, Nirmala. Thank you, good panel members. I know it's, 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 there's a lot of questions out there. I just would like to now invite uh, Ms. Bhavna Sharma, the sponsor. Uh, she's the owner and proprietor of RTS Interior Products and the sponsor of this webinar. Um, I just just let me uh, give me a few seconds to introduce her. She's someone who really loves wood and is very passionate about working with wood. Uh, you'll see that in the products uh, RTS creates out of wood and the projects she's done so far. So Bhavna will be sharing with you a small presentation and talking about her journey, uh, what she has done till date. Bhavna, over to you. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks, Nirmala. Thanks for introducing me uh, and having me here this afternoon. I would like to uh, start by saying a big thanks to both ICBC and the Canadian Wood for organizing such an informative session and such a thought-provoking session by some of the architects of the country and especially for inviting RTS and me to be a part of this virtual forum today. It's such an honor to be here among such industry stalwarts. Most importantly, because RTS is truly motivated to build green and inspire everyone to build healthier built environments. When we started uh, RTS in the year 2011, we realized that timber was widely in use in our country, not only just to make furniture or doors and windows, but structurally, and it could last centuries. But unfortunately, uh, it lost the charm because it could not cope up with the growing needs of the building and construction industry, largely due to lack of research and technological advancements in our country. Some of the key concerns were unavailability of graded timber, longer spans, and expansion and contraction in particular, uh, which could not be addressed uh, unless we use certain modern techniques of timber engineering, one of them being glued lamination. Glue lamp is a technology wherein multi-layered lumber is glued together in a manner that the grain directions are opposite and it counters the movement. And that is what we started doing in RTS, our inception. Mass timber offers enormous advantage and it outweighs any other building material because it is sustainable, infinitely renewable, the construction is quick and dry, uh, and it offers remarkable aesthetics, exceptional fire and earthquake resistance. But you know what, it was like running a marathon for us uh, at RTS to sort of narrow down to the right techniques and methods of glued lamination so that it is able to withstand the kind of uh, unique weather conditions we have in our country and other conditions like termites, etc. But now it's been nine years and we've been successfully doing it. We have executed uh, more than around 300 projects uh, where we have involved RTS glue lamp, timber, window and door systems in high-end residences. Uh, coming on to post and beam construction was sort of a natural progression for us. And today we are capable of doing right from a small rooftop structure to a premium residence with great interiors or maybe any, any, any iconic structure with tall timber curtain walls. 
um, and all, all, all of this happens in our research state of the art manufacturing facility. And today through this platform, I would like to invite whoever is interested for a factory tour to see how mass timber is being utilized to build building products. I would also like to convey to all the architects that you guys design and leave the rest on to us. So we bring your design to reality. In fact, RTS is investing and trying to develop uh, the entire ecosystem so that it's absolute peace of mind for you guys. We also assure you that RTS will keep innovating and investing in newer technologies like cross laminated timber and other engineered products so that we are able to match the growing needs of this industry in our country. Parallelly affecting a lot of encouragement and support from the fraternity. Uh, thanks for hearing me out. Uh, over to Nirmala. Thank you, Bhavna. It was a wonderful presentation, short and sweet, but thank you. Thank you for being there and waiting patiently. Um, just, I, I will just end this with a small note and then I'll hand it over to Nadira. Uh, on behalf of Canadian Wood, I seriously uh, would like to thank all eminent panelists, architect N. Mahesh, architect Gurpreet, architect Kamal Malik, uh, for sharing some of the wonderful and creative works with us. We were really fortunate to have you showcase us a wide range of your works and you coming from different cities of India on our panel gave us a panoramic view of the architecture with wood in India. Thank you, Professor Gurdev Singh, uh, our curator and moderator of this webinar today. Thank you for taking time out to curate the questions for us. Um, a big thank you to Andrew Smith, Minister Commercial High Commission of Canada and India for supporting and backing our efforts in India, along with Nadira and Shivani at ICBC, who helped us bring this to the audience together with Canadian Wood, our sponsor RTS, who are basically large consumers of Canadian Wood in their projects. It is a well-known fact that Canada is a world leader in sustainable forest management. We have wood products from British Columbia coming into India through our 34 stockist network and easily available. We can help, uh, help you in case you're interested, uh, source these wood products locally in India or directly from Canada. If you need any more information on Canadian wood, please do not hesitate to reach out to our business development team who's available through offices in Gurgram as well as in Bangalore and Mumbai, who can help and guide you on sourcing wood. Before I hand over to Nadira, just a small piece of information. Tomorrow, probably you'll be receiving a survey link from Canadian wood sent directly to your re registered email ID. Request you to kindly fill the feedback form and share back with us suggestions are almost um, always welcome. We look forward to seeing you again. Do keep in touch and attend our next series of webinar. Thank you. Thank you for attending. Over to you, Nadira. Uh, thank you, Nirmala. I would like to again thank Bhavna Sharma and RTS for sponsoring today's session and supporting us and to Canadian Wood, to Nirmala and to Pranesh uh, for partnering with ICBC. Uh, we are privileged to have the stalwarts of architecture in India Art architects uh, N. Mahesh, Gurpreet Singh, and Kamal Malik on the panel. And many thanks to Professor Gurdev Singh for moderating this very interesting session today. The Indo-Canadian Business Chamber is headquartered in New Delhi, but we have offices in Bangalore, in Ahmedabad, in Mumbai, and in Calcutta. We invite all of you, in case you're interested, to please get in touch with us. We will be able to guide you about membership. We are uh, the, the conduit between India and Canada for business and trade purposes. Uh, we thank you everybody and we look forward to seeing you in our forthcoming webinars. Have a good day and stay safe.